hell is it going? Hope you're having a hell of a morning. Uh, I did this video a couple weeks ago about you know making your program drum sound a little bit more realistic. And this one is going to be quite in depth. So, you know, buckle your seatbelts, that kind of stuff. Get your thinking caps on. Put down the bong and pay attention. All that good stuff. Maybe grab a cup of coffee because uh, this one's going to have some details in it. That's for sure. And for me, anyway, when it comes to working with program drums over the last couple of years, you know, I've been working on the software extinction level event here for quite a while. And, you know, it's when I started working with the multi-track output of this. This is where it really became something special because I'm like, wow, this really works because I can process this like I would process a normal acoustic kit and I can use all my plugins and a lot of my outboard gear and that kind of stuff. And I'm thinking, okay, great. A tutorial on how to do this kind of stuff would probably be a very good idea because that's the thing about working with a contact multi-track output. You got to be a bit of a masochist to really take advantage of, you know, all the capabilities because it does get a little complex. Now, to make this easier for you guys out there who don't want to deal with this crap but still want the advantage of mixing and multi-track, I'm going to have my Reaper template available as a free download. All you got to do is follow the link in the description and you'll get it. So this next part is for masochists only. If you're really into this, I'll show you how to set up a multi-track output and how to route it all together and whatnot. And then we're going to have another part where I show you how to mix with that multi-track setup to get the most realistic effect you possibly can out of it. So I'm going to have chapter markers set up in the timeline so you can skip this next bit if you don't want to go through all the tedium of setting all this shit up. But if you want to learn how to do it for yourself, pay attention to this next part. It's going to get interesting. All right. So anyway, we've got ELE here and I'm in, you know, kind of like 2K resolution mode right now. Usually when I'm doing screen caps, I'm in 1080, but it's just contact is so huge. It wouldn't actually fit on the screen, but I do have some zoom ins here. So yeah, we've got contact set up for, you know, stereo outs. If we go over here, you know, we're just on a single Reaper channel over here. You know, and th this is absolutely fine to work this way. Yeah. It's nice. We got a whole bunch of presets and that kind of stuff here. Jordan's was my personal favorite. And, uh, you know, if we go on mine, it's a little bit different, maybe a little bit more room sound, you know, kind of what I like for, for my kind of mixes. But I think Jordan's was a good place to start off. I think it would work better for a lot of people that way. But again, it's not all about just presets. There we go. Took a second for everything to load in there. Yeah, that's nice and snappy. My kick's a little different, that kind of thing, processed a little different. Yeah, it's all kinds of fun. And yeah, I love this, how you get the uh, different heads as well. We can go clear or coded with a couple of different mics. Like, well, let's go coded D6 here. The, the, this is a pretty cool tom sound. That's yeah, pretty neat. Go back to the clear MD420. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be showing this crap off. We should get to the routing bit. This is where it gets interesting, okay, because contact is a bit of a bitch to set this stuff up. So for what we first want to do is we want to get all the elements here, all the kick, snare, toms, all the shells and that kind of stuff going to their own individual channels. And same thing with the different symbols. Usually I like, you know, the hi-hat and the ride uh, left and right on a stereo channel, splashes their own stereo channel, the stack and the china again, and then the two different types of overheads we're going to have to their own stereo set as well, as well as all the room mics. So in order to do that, ugh, this is the part I really fucking hate. I really do. I mean, like this, this part just plain sucks. Okay. So we want to go into the number of outputs we got here. And right now we've got six stereo outputs and four auxiliaries. So I'm thinking I want to set this up for, let's say, Maybe, I don't know, 22 outputs right now, just to be absolutely certain we're doing it the right way. We can always take the extras out after, but this is where it gets interesting. So we're going to, we, since we've already got six in there, uh, so we'll add like 18 outputs here. And they'll be set for stereo outputs. And then there's a way to do this with the panning to get them to go to their own individual channels. Uh, we don't know. We want to keep the original channels, but we want to make, click this here, make this our default configuration. So next time we load it up, it's going to have those channels in place. And there we go. Output configuration saved as default. Cool. And check it out down here at the bottom. We've got all our outputs. Great. Can we name these? Yep. Yes, we can. Uh, this might actually help though. Uh, we're going to leave stereo one alone because it's kind of a weird default thing. So I'm just going to set this up. Kick, snare, tom one, tom two, tom three. 
overheads, all that kind of crap. And then we're going to route it by using these guys right here. And I think I need to reset this because it is, oh, what do we got here? Yeah, and it's setting up all the different unassigned outputs. Hooray. Yeah, this is this is where it's going to get real tedious. So I'm going to set a couple of these up and then I'm going to fast forward through the annoying bit uh, just to show kind of like before and after. But I'm not going to make you sit here for 10 minutes and go through every single last step because that's going to be more boring than a Henning Pulley video. All right. So basically, let's go back to the shells mix here for a second. Let me set this up. S1, we'll say kick, snare, T1, T2, T3 for toms, obviously, in case the bass players couldn't figure that out. And we'll just set up the routing as such. So kick in, kick E, kick out, kick sub. Those I'm going to group uh, just to the kick output. And that's not saying that. Okay, that's fucking interesting. And let me try saving this and see what's up. And reopen it, see what the hell happens, load contact back up. Fingers crossed that this is actually going to do what I need it to. And if not, might have to pause it here and figure it out. Ah, there we go. Look at that. Kick, snare, T1. Yeah, okay. Rule number one to any of this stuff, they kept saying it in the IT crowd over and over and over again, is have you tried turning it off and back on again? That was literally the only tech support they did. Nine times out of 10, that's usually what it is. Okay, so we're on the shells mix here. We're just going to set these up for kick. Snare top, snare bottom, that's going to be a snare. And this is how I like to mix... Uh, my mics anyway in the real world. I'll take like two mics, like a snare top and bottom, put them in their own folder and, and mix it as one. Same with all my different kick elements, that kind of thing. So we'll set that to Tom 1, Tom 2, Tom 3. And we can just keep those as stereo tracks. Front of kit, we're going to put that to, I don't fucking know, I guess front maybe i don't even i don't really even care for that very much the reverb's going to go to channel one and two and i don't we're not going to be using that uh for this kind of mix anyway so i'm not going to worry about it too much but yes let's set that up kick snare tom one tom two tom three and what with that stereo seven we uh we'll just call that front and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now I'm going to pause this right here, fill in the rest of this stuff, and we're going to skip ahead to the next part, which is actually the relevant shit you need to know. Be one sec. One eternity later. Okay, now if this hasn't put you to sleep yet, uh, don't worry, this next part probably will because this is the boring as crazy shit here. So we've got all our tracks set to outputs here. Kick, snare, tom, one, two, three, front, all that stuff is ready to go exactly where it needs to be. That's great. And... So here's the thing. If we kick on, if we hit it, click on any of the other, any of the drum elements, we're basically getting the reverb. That's it. You can see everything's coming up on on the screen where wherever we're hitting things. There's the kick. There's the snare. Tom one. Everything's going right where we assigned it and that's the only problem is now we have to configure those outputs into something that reaper can understand and this is where it gets a little bit crazy okay so basically we've got a reverb out thing is we need to assign all these faders down here to outputs that reaper can understand so what we're going to have to do is click on this and give the kick a physical connection here that's set for output one and two now, I just made this mistake and I figured out what the hell I do. When we assign another channel, remember this is stereo. So one, two, one, two, we want stereo output. So this is stereo two left, stereo two right. Plug in out three and four. That way it's going to go exactly where we want it to. We can set up a stereo input on Reaper for three and four. And then same thing here. So this is stereo three, stereo three, and to the next channel, Tom one, stereo four, stereo four. And this is great because then we can do panning and all that kind of stuff too, and it's going to be great. Uh, Tom two, stereo five, stereo five. <sighs> Tedious as fuck, yes. Stereo six, stereo six. I wish there was a way to do this quicker. Uh, fortunately, you guys are going to get a quicker way to do that because... I'm making a template for this. So all you're going to have to do if you're a Reaper guy is just download it and load it up. It should work fine. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's what Reaper is going to see. So that's pretty cool. Uh, moving right along here. So this was, yeah, stereo seven, I believe, plugging out 13 and 14. Only problem is I got to keep scrolling down for all these. And 
Uh, stereo eight. Okay, 15, 16. And let's just put this into a time-lapse mode here. Let's speed it up because this is the really tedious part, and I don't think anybody really wants to go through all this shit. Again, if you're doing this at home because you want to learn how to do it and whatnot, it's great, but it can be a little tedious, and it's very easy to make a mistake here. So you're going to have to check and recheck and recheck and recheck. So we're at stereo 8 right now. If, I, if anybody knows a quicker way to do this, I am all ears. Stereo 9. Okay, that's our 19 outputs all the way to channel 37 and 38. Collapse that down and that would do right there. We're gonna make a uh, preset here just so I don't lose this. And then as a yearly multi out for Reaper, we've got that in place. I'm gonna save the project because I don't wanna fuck this up, that's for sure. All right, now this next part is the critical part. This is when you're opening up Reaper and you want to set it up for a multi-output. This is how to do it and uh, not get completely overwhelmed with setting up channels and outputs. We've got contact set up. Uh, this was inspired by a video by a guy named Josh Bauer. Josh, thank you so much for making this video. It's extremely helpful. And um, I'm just going to show you guys here. But yes, if you have time, go check out Josh's video as well. He goes a little bit more in depth here. Okay, so the big secret here, and, and this is going to save you a lot of work, is all you got to do is insert ventral instrument on new track, load up contact, and watch what this does. This is really cool. Hit add. And it says, do you want to add following tracks for this effect? If only the mono one or two outputs will be audio without further routing. So we want to click yes. Bam. Check this shit out. We're all set up. Everything's just been routed. Now, I'm going to clean this up because this is going for 64 outs. But, yeah, we're, we're good to go here. And all I want to do is load up that preset I just made. Ely Multi for Reaper. Hopefully this loads up correctly. Give it a second to churn away. There's our outputs. Everything's set and ready to go. And then all we have to do is just mix. At least this is what I think is going to happen. Hopefully this is going to the right spots. Ha ha ha! I just want to check and see where everything's going. Obviously I need to turn some crap down. It's clipping a little bit, so kick. Snare. Tom one. Ah, okay, fuck that up. Interesting. All right, so we're back and herein lies the problem. We've got kick and snare and toms and everything going to two channels because we got it set for stereo outputs here. Snare showing up on one, kick, snare showing up on another. We've got toms going on a couple of channels here. And this should be only going to one, and we should be able to have you know, stereo input here. So in order to make this work, this is what we have to do. And again, this is where the tedium part comes in, and this is just annoying as shit. But again, if you grab my template, this is going to work. You want, you're not going to have to fuck with anything because this is just going to work really well. So we'll label a couple here just to show you what's going on here. So we're going to keep our eye on where everything's routed. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, et cetera, et cetera. What we want to do is for, for the kick here, we want to go into the routing button. And where we got audio one here, we want stereo source. And that's stereo source three and four. And that is going to put things, the kick, right on the intended kick track. Let me show you what I mean. Still on T1, T2, but we've got a kick going here now right where it should be and fuck that is loud we're gonna have to get that all turned down and one up because it's clipping obviously but snare again we can hit the routing button here and snare is five six all we got to do is change our source up stereo source to five six pull out take a look that should go right to the snare mic or to the snare fader oh yeah that's what i love about Ely. hear that that's the snare getting picked up by the by the kick mics that's cool. That's just like how a real kit works. So, yeah, we got a snare here. We're all good. And Tom 1 will be 7 and 8. Same idea. Hit the routing. 
<sighs> Stereo Source. Seven and eight. I wish there were a way to do this uh, easier, but at least, hey, we've got all the channels set up. We've got a basic idea where shit's supposed to go. That's great. That's where I want it. And the great thing is if I go into Shell's Mix here, if I want to pull Rack Tom all the way over, it should follow the panning now in ELE. If we solo that up, this should be a stereo source. Let's hear what we get. That's way over. Perfect. This is as intended. Again, I can move Rock Tom over all the way to the other side. Go back to this. And it's pan it's it's uh, following the panning as intended. Now I just need to get the other track set up because it's gonna seem a little weird until we get everything set up to the desired outputs. And again, this is the tedious part. This is the part I'm going to save a lot of time on, but this is the part where we hit the time lapse just so I don't bore you guys to death here. So let's hit it. Wow. Okay. I think I've got everything routed finally. Let's just uh, take a look here and make sure everything's going to where it needs to be. Perfect. Look at that. Yeah. You know, here's our front room mics. We can have some fun with these guys. Let's uh, solo that up. Rear mics, overheads. We got two different sets. I think that one's down, actually. Yeah. Yeah. In my preset, I'm only using one set. We'll we'll, we'll zero out that fader and bring it around to one. So China mic. There we go. Splash two. Everything just seems to be assigned exactly where it's supposed to be here. So is that one. There we go. Splash one. Beautiful. Hats. Lovely. Front of kit. Yep, everything seems to be routed correctly. And again, we should get a, if I do to three toms here, we should get a nice roll across without. Beautiful. And yeah, you know, we can put that up with some, some rooms in. Nice. The fun is always in the room, Mike, that's for sure. But again, it all comes down to that, uh, you know, that that bleed. That's really where the, where the key is here. I'm going to show you a few different things about that. I mean, about, I mean like, here's a snare. Lovely. We hit the snare. Hi-hat. That's still coming in. Still get a bit of that cymbal wash. And, of course, we've got bleed controls in the settings here. And if I want to bring that up a little bit, I can turn up that hi-hat bleed just a little bit. Oh, I want the tom bleed on, too. I want all the bleed. Give me all the bleed. Yes, make it bleed. That's really the key to making this shit work as intended. So, yeah, I just want a little bit more bleed in the hats and the snares. So give it a bit more of that real feel because once you put that in, uh, it, it really starts to take on a new dimension. So that's still the, the snare mic. Sold up. Cool. And again, with the room mics. Cool. Great. Now, of course, uh, first and all, uh, foremost, save new version of Project. That's one thing I love about Reaper is the new version of Project feature. That's for sure. If you want to learn how to do your routing, that's how to do it. And then you can just clean things up. That's what I'm going to do here now. I'm going to start taking out some of the extra tracks that I'm not using. But I am going to save this as a Reaper template and make this downloadable and even throw in some mixing elements and, and that kind of stuff. Okay, just going to break in here for a second before I sign off. I got to look at the last take. And yeah, this video is clocked in at about 40 minutes before editing so i'm like Argh! yeah i might have to break this one up into two parts i'm sure you guys won't mind this is all about the routing next episode will be about how to mix it and whatnot now i did run into a snag actually as i was checking it on on a midi track here i thought hey let's load up the midi track and then i can show you how to mix it like here's it up raw all the processing is off no that's what the processing off That really sounds nice. That's not hyper processed. That's sounds much like more like a real kit here. I mean, like we listen to that snare plan. 
Now we're getting some of that bleed in there. Tom Mike's, we're getting the bleed like we should and whatnot. And that's... Now the whole kit's vibrating like a shit. That's cool. That's what we need. Now the problem was when I assigned the hollow outputs, they were grayed out, which was really bizarre. And so what I did was I moved the overheads onto the same stereo output, 27 and 28. And I'll just control it up here because I'm kind of a one overheads guy or another not having them blow through blending. But if I want that, I can do that there and then process them as a group in Reaper. Not a big issue. But for whatever reason, the last set, I had the setup for uh, stereo 37 and 38 and it just was not happening here uh not stereo 37 38 stereo 19 out just wasn't working for whatever reason and i'm not sure why uh you know i am not an expert in this at all yeah i just want real and i want to mix these like i would a real kit and we can do that because i'm i really enjoy mixing real drum sets that kind of thing for whatever reason the hall output Went where it's supposed to go, but it was just grayed out. I don't know what's going to happen here now. Yeah. You see that? It's just grayed out here. I don't know why that is. I've got it connected right, but it was not coming up here. So I got to move that back down to 35. And, oh, yeah. If we put up hall here as well. Actually, this is going to be the hall. Let's see if we get it. But it's still grayed out. Yeah, so we're not getting anything. Here. Neither or. So... We got to bring that back down to the output 3536. That seems to be the maximum there. I don't know what the deal is there. That would be stereo output 18. Maybe we're only getting 36 stereo channels. I don't know. It's supposed to be a 64 out thing. So uh, 32. Okay, maybe. Maybe, maybe I am uh, pushing the, the maximum outputs here because I got so many stereo tracks going on. That could be true. Yeah, can't really say for sure what's going on here, but seems to work now that I've, I've now that I put this back here like so should be okay let's see what we get right we can set up uh, r far for stereo 3536 ugh see what we get again this is tedious as hell but there we go okay so that's uh all we need to do is relabel these rooms and we should be good to go here. So I'm going to do that real fast here. Again, it's uh, the tab button to get to the next channel when you're labeling there. So we've just got that set up for overheads. Okay. And I think I'm going to add that last channel. We're going to put that under the reverb there, uh, which we had sold up, which was pretty nice, actually. So we'll just set that up. The stereo input from one and two. Stereo source one and two. That should give us the drum reverb. Let's see what we get. There we go. How about that? Cool. Now, oh yeah, one thing before I go here, somebody was asking about ELE if um, you know we were using some kind of an IR simulator for all the different room mics. No, <laughs> these were all chopped up by hand. There were several hundred thousand samples in here, and it took quite a bit of effort to get this all configured. Uh, but don't take my word for it. Go check it out because it's not a huge asking price at only eighty four bucks. It definitely delivers the goods and gives you some much needed realism. Um, I can't wait to get into the second part here where I can really show you guys how to mix all this stuff and make it work like a real kit. And it just brings that much more added realism to your mixes as well. It's a really cool system. It's a really great way to work. And like I said, if I didn't think this was cool, I wouldn't be selling it to you guys because you know how much I hate programmed drums. But then again, I can accept the reality of the situation and realize that not everybody has a crap ton of money to throw away on real drums, preamps, mics, all the rest of it, finding a soundproof room, and most importantly, a drummer who can actually play competently. Yeah, <laughs> good luck with that. All right, so anyway, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up here because this one was a little bit more in-depth than I was originally planning, and once again, I am not an expert in this at all. I'm just kind of putting this all together in something that works here for me in the situation. You know, veteran MIDI guys are probably, you know, rolling their eyes at this, and that's absolutely fine if they know better <laughs> i will defer to the experts but if you like what you see here and you want to save yourself some tedium of going through all that crap i've got a free template for this reaper setup available all you got to do is follow the link in the description below and once again grab extinction level event if you want some kick-ass program drums thanks for watching and this uh series will be back next week and i'll show you how i put this together and mix it like a real kit